All right, so I want to make this video uh, based on the Dominator. So when Bill sent this to me, he sent me a few extra parts. Now, this is the new rear stinger, and I think this is the part that goes with the new rear stinger, okay? Now, if we come over here, this is the old rear, and this is the old rear. So basically, I haven't really noticed much of a difference in this piece, besides there's one nut on the uh, center Allen, and on this one, there's two nuts. So, one nut, two nut. Besides that, I believe they are the exact same. Now, the stems here, these are what's different. <clears throat> so this, this size here, is the exact size of the stuffing tube. And it fits over the stuffing tube just like that. Now, if we try to think about this in terms of adjustment, there is none because we're dealing with a stuffing tube that's about an inch and a quarter long and when you slide this all the way on how can you trim the rear stinger up and down you can't because the stuffing tube is glued in rigid through the hole so there's no way to do this now what I noticed on my runs and on ironclad RC's video is that with his dominator he wore out the bushing shaft and he broke his flex shaft. So if you look at this, I'm gonna to try to use a straight edge and show you the best I can. Look at that degree change from, let me zoom out a little bit and try and do this with one hand. All right, so look at the degree change from the boat to the rear of the stinger. So I had measured that and we're right at two and a half millimeters. Now, you can crank down on the rear strut, and you can basically force it to become flat. And you're putting all that load right here on the carbon fiber of that stuffing tube, and you're trying to bend the stuffing tube in that little tiny quarter inch gap to compensate for what you're trying to adjust with that rear strut. So, I don't know if what I'm going to do is wrong, or if... The stuffing tube was actually supposed to be bent and come out straight. That's what I feel. I feel like the stuffing tube theoretically should be straight. Or it's just a funky design. Now, you have this rear strut. This is the one that came on it. There's a difference. This has a bushing in the end. Uh, like, you know, a lead-plated bushing in here that is sacrificial that your flex shaft wears out. On an Ironclad's video, he wore this bushing out in a U-shape. And the reason why it wore out in a U-shape is because when you take this thing and you put it in a bind, well, one side's going to wear out at the top, and the other side's going to wear out at the bottom, like where my fingers are. So it's going to wear out here, and then it's going to wear out here when it's in a bind like that. So the upgraded shaft has a larger hole in it. So if you were to put it in there, it can move around. It's not... See the, see the two different sizes? Now there is a shim, a bushing inside of here. I can knock out. So inside is this bushing. Now this bushing is the same exact inside diameter as the outside diameter of this stuffing tube here. So that fits perfect. No play, no slop, no nothing. And then this hole on the rear strut goes over that and it goes like that and sits away from it just a little bit, but the same thing, no adjustability. You know, now it's got a little bit of play, but that's just because it's sloppy. Now, so what I was thinking about doing, I was thinking about taking the stuffing tube and cutting it about right here. And there's a reason why, and I'll show you. If we take our flex shaft and we put it in, I have already cut this tube. I've cut this tube. It used to stop about right here. Now, the reason why I cut it was because I realized the flex shaft doesn't do its job if when you try to trim it and you try to move it, it's not the flex part isn't showing. So the so if we take the shaft and we slide it out about a half an inch, now if you were to give it adjustable trim, the uh, 
the flex shaft is taking that you know that abuse but on ironclad big b's he had his and i watched his and he said oh there was something wrong with it and it had cracked it cracked right at the weld where they weld the solid shaft to the flex shaft and he had a he had a crack through there so i can understand how the fatigue happened with that was because he probably tried to trim it probably tried to trim it flat that takes this now mind you i already cut mine off a little i did that i cut off maybe you know three-eighths of an inch so it gives me a little bit of play that was my goal at the at the first i was like all right well i'll cut just enough off to where and i measured it with a micrometer you know to where my flex shaft I can get a little bit of play because before even this was rigid. It was almost to the point where you didn't even need a flex shaft because theoretically it's straight through. So I like, well, can you run piano wire? You know, I just, I don't know. So what I'm going to do, and I hope I don't ruin the boat, but I believe, you know, you could theoretically replace the stuffing tube if needed, but I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to cut it off really close to the hole. I'm going to leave myself... Uh, I don't know, half of an inch. Let's go ahead and measure this. I'll be able to see. I'm going to leave a little bit over a quarter exposed. Because I think with a little over a quarter exposed, if I wanted to go back with this, it'll still bite. Because you slip this over it, and that's where it sits. So I'll probably leave a little bit more than what's exposed there. But anybody who watches this, if you have a dominator or if you've dealt with a similar problem, what are your thoughts on the stuffing tube? Should the stuffing tube come out flush with, you know, level with the bottom of the hull? Or should it have negative angle? Because right now, if you flip the boat over, you know, right now it looks like it has upward angle to it. But if you flip the boat over, that has that's negative angle. So that's that's making it plow. It's pushing the nose of the boat down. Maybe that's how this was designed. I don't know. But I just want anybody else's insight on that. Um, but by the time you watch this video, I'll have already cut this off. So we're going to see. And we'll see if it has any detrimental effects. And if it does, I'll just jerk the stuffing tube out, knock it out, and I'll put a new one in it. But just part of the hobby is testing things and improving things. And I feel like if you are supposed to have adjustable trim, you cannot have adjustable trim if the stuffing tube is preventing you from doing so. That means this shouldn't be adjustable. This should just be preset wherever it is. That's where it is. And you should run it just like that. And I haven't seen any of these that are non-adjustable. Every single one I've seen, the every boat that I have, the stuffing tube stops at the at the back of the transom, and then the stinger mounts onto it, and it gives you adjustability. And the flex shaft, the cable of the flex shaft, is exposed just a little, and and that's where it rides. It sits there and gives it that little bit, you know, um, two millimeters up and down for adjustability, but. Give me your thoughts in the comment below. Let me know if I'm right. Let me know if I'm wrong. Um, give me in, any insight, any pointers you can. So thank y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. Um, there's a lot of things I've got coming. Um, I just placed the order for another motor today. I got a Poseidon motor coming. That is 1800 kV. I also ordered another cheapo 1900 kV. Um, we're going to try to make some smoke happen. We're going to take the Hydra and smoke some motors, see what they can take. And I'll show you these. So I spent 450 bucks the other day. So here is an SRD pack. This is going to be for my 6S setup. So I have two of these. And then I have these here. Actually, I opened up other ones somewhere. I got some bigger one. These are the first. 4S, the green packs that I got, the High Cycle Life High Powered, High Performance. So these are 4S, 4S, and then these are 4S. Where is it at? So I was looking at it. Yeah, here it is. So this is a 5200 4S, and this is a 5200 3S. You can see the height difference. So I don't think these will actually fit in the Dominator. 
but they will fit in the Spartan. So we're going to take the Spartan and we're going to make it 8S. That is coming up, but I want to get the Dominator squared away first. Probably make another four or five videos. It's just horrible weather where I'm at right now. So it's just not in indicative to putting the boat out on the water. So we're going to knock out a lot of stuff here in the hobby room. Get things ready for when the weekend comes. We can take some boats out on the pond, get them squared away. Once I get them pretty much dialed in, I'll take them to one of the two big ponds that I can get to and uh, and we'll go out for some GPS runs. You know, I got one pond that's 16 acres and then I got one pond that's three acres. So they're both really, really nice, nice spots. But um, yeah, this is a 14 volt. So this is gonna be an SRD pack. This is gonna be one of my high speed runs for 8S. And uh, we'll just, we'll try to dial it in on the uh, HPs. And then when it comes for maximum speed, we're gonna drop in the SRD. So I'm really excited about these. I've swapped absolutely everything over to these QS8 connectors. I love them. They don't spark, they don't arc, they don't do nothing. They don't even get hot anymore. Like the old Traxxas connectors were getting to 140, 150 degrees. These bad boys get like maybe 105, 108, 109. Really, really, really good. Once you step up into current draws that are, you know, 2,000, 2,500, you really, really, really need to step up your uh, your connectors on your batteries. And that was something that I didn't want to do. I, I like the Traxxas hookup. Um, but, you know, once you melt one, then that's it. It's, it's time. You, you've, you've outgrown the capability of the plug. But thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you all on the next one.